all of you have probably experienced some form of celebrity yourself because of your scheduled work, for instance, at times, you know, you sign autographs, you are celebrity. Um, how important do you think it is in scepticism to have heroes and personalities and kind of celebrity side of things? I think we live in a very celebrity obsessed kind of age and uh, in some ways I think rather than being sceptical about that you sort of go embrace it and think that it's actually quite useful because when, as I said before, I mentioned a blog post by Agnes Crowe and I have tweeted and suddenly thousands and thousands of people are coming in. Jonathan Ross has billions of one or more followers and people on the planet on Twitter. Stephen Fry, people like that, Robin Innes. Um, there's, in fact, there's a whole sort of whatever the collective now for comedians is, um, there's a whole shitload of comedians. Is that a metric shitload? Um, there's, there's, there are a lot of comedians who are, who are kind of very into the sceptic movement and are really sort of promoting this type of stuff and they, they're really effective at bringing a whole new audience to this kind of thing. In fact, in many ways I think it would be cool um, if there was a sort of a a celebrity mentorship program where, where bloggers could be hooked up with celebrities and the celebrity would pimp their blog program <laughs> and get this whole new audience in. So I think celebrities are easily, if there are any celebrities here tonight. <laughs> Just you. Uh, I, I, I tend to think that skeptics in general treat celebrities the way that they should be treated by um, respecting what they do without um, putting them up on such a pedestal that they agree with whatever they say. And so I think that. But there's still this um, this idea of you know you you see someone I see the idea that's good yeah no, I just it took a minute um, <laughs> like yes of course I'm right uh, but, but there's a you know when you when you see someone you, you like and admire and all of a sudden they're validating something that's very important your worldview that's a really good feeling and there's something wrong with acknowledging that good feeling and and with being excited to to see a celebrity doing that. And, and then, yeah, there's the, the follow-up uh, to that is that now you know this celebrity is going to get your worldview out to a greater audience, and then, there, then there'll be more of you. And that's, that's exciting. You wanna, we, we like being another skeptics. And, and this, is, <coughs> this is a new thing, isn't it? I mean, is it just me? Or, I mean, I think, I don't know, who would possibly the first, perhaps, perhaps Darren Brown was the first person to sort of prominently, as a TV person, not a sort of Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens type, who was, you know, written best in the books about atheism, but someone who was a TV personality who has sort of gone out and said, you know, I'm, I'm, this is what I am and I don't mind if that means I lose a part of an audience. Well, I mean, James Brandy and fantastic it, it actually goes back yeah, quite a ways, I think, and I think that's a good thing. But I think there seems to be more now. I mean, as you said, in comedy, there seems to be a huge raft of comedians that are actually using this material in, in their acts. And, that, and that's more awesome. celebrities yeah. yeah. now, and the trend's just kind of kept constant with the number of celebrities there are now. Right now. Like every fifth person is a celebrity. You can't walk down the street without seeing some you know, football that's one of the most famous and someone. And, uh, I do think it makes a Yeah, I quite like Penny Goldberg because uh, concept, I think it probably came up with the idea of micro celebrity where everyone is famous for 15 people. <laughs> <laughs> I think in that case we're all we're all micro celebrities here, everyone in the room, aren't we? It goes back to that wedge idea too. On the opposite side, it's nice for skeptics to know someone famous thinks the way they do. But it's also a nice introduction to say, well, I know you watch John Ross, <coughs> actually he's a skeptic. Really? What does that mean? And then you're in. Right. We have, I've seen websites that list celebrities that are atheists, and it's nice to sort of see, ooh, okay, this, and, and it's not apparent in what they do. So there's a, a cooking show that my guy called Alton Brown. Uh, in the States, one of my favorite cooking shows, and I saw he was an atheist. It was like, cool, because I know people that enjoy his program that aren't atheists. And again, it's just the, it's the wedge, it's that tiny wedge. Yeah, I think my experience is, I sort of had an experience on both sides of that. Um, it was Penn and Teller that got me involved in all this. I, I've always been sort of, I guess, a closet skeptic. I didn't really identify as a skeptic, but I, I understood the concepts, basically. And, uh, and, but I've been fans of Penn and Teller for years and years, and they were uh, promoting, or Penn in particular was promoting the amazing meeting a few years ago. And I was like, oh, maybe I should go to that. It sounds great. Penn and Teller going to be there, and the posters guys, and blah, blah, blah. And I finally got 
to want it. And it was great, I loved it, and, and uh, the amazing meeting is always fun, but I didn't really, uh, you know, think that I had anything in common with, say, Penn and Teller or Randy or Michael Shermer or Phil Play, because here are these people with PhDs or 40 years of experience in magic and all that stuff. But what, what caught me was at, uh, at the Las Vegas version of TAM, they do a thing on, uh, it, it runs for four days, and on the last day, they do a thing where ordinary skeptics can present papers, like at an academic meeting. And you get up and you get 20 minutes to talk about something that you're doing in skepticism, like how are you educating uh, students in school, or how did you build your website? And the first time I went to, Rebecca, gave a presentation that day about how to be a D-list celebrity, I think it was C-list. I think it was D-list internet celebrity. A D-list internet celebrity celebrity. And there were other people who were doing, uh, and that whole day it just kind of opened my eyes because here were people up on the stage who were just like me. They weren't famous PhDs who had written 11 books or famous magicians who had been debunking things for 45 years. Uh, these were people exactly like me who had done something interesting that was interesting to this crowd full of 800 people in the room. And it's like, you know, maybe I could be up on that stage. And sure enough, I set out to build What's the Harm, and the very next time, one uh, year and a half later, well, it wasn't the very next time, but a year and a half later in Las Vegas, I was up on that stage on that Sunday paper presentation, giving a presentation. So, uh, you know, it was a celebrity that brought me in with it, but it was the non-celebrities that got me to be involved. You could have just made a sex type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we wouldn't want to see that. I'd like to, to say one more thing, um, and not talk about me, but uh, to talk about a fantastic woman I know who, um, who has actually been uh, a writer on Skeptic for quite a while now and always has done a wonderful job and recently organized this amazing conference. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it was called TAM London. Um, Tracy uh, <laughs> is, yeah, <laughs> the, the girl in the scary bear t-shirt to my right. Um, Tracy has, is so smart and driven and I, in the best possible way to, um, to improve skepticism, to do what she can to make the skeptical community into something wonderful. And I think she really has this weekend. And, um, Last night we were at the pub and we were talking about how wonderful Tracy is, and we decided we decided that um, we should pass a hat and a card and get her um, a little present to say thank you for the amazing job she's done this weekend. So um, if you turn around, you'll really see. <laughs>